your objective from the moment you greet them all the way through the process. It is not to close the sale. There's an appropriate point where you go to close the sale. Your only objective from the moment you greet them is to move them to the next step. Then when you qualify them, is to move them to the next step. And then when you're showing them the vehicle, is to move them to the next step. That is the objective. Now, let me get back to the attention span. Now, knowing that the average person's attention span is only eight seconds. One thing I'm going to say right now, the people that watch these videos, that watch them in their entirety, majority of them are the ones who are producing at the store. So the thing is this, if you're coming to watch the video for one minute, two minutes, and you expect you're going to hear this big wow factor, you're not. What it is, is everything within the video has a purpose. And the purpose is not just to inform you, but to let you know the psychology behind it. Remember some people buy 90% based off emotion and back it up with 10% logic. So when you spend time trying to logically educate a customer who may have two or three cars or who's bringing in a vehicle that's only three or four years old to get something else, Logically, that wouldn't make sense. But emotionally, man, I want that new thing. Emotionally, I feel like rewarding myself for the work that I've been doing. So I want to go out and buy some. Emotionally, I love the safety features that it has for my children and myself so we can all make it home safely in one piece if there's an accident. Emotionally, that is what stimulates us. That's what drives us. When you go to a clothing store, why is there a mirror there? Because they want you to put the clothes on and to feel good and to feel like you look good. All right. So how do we take that same type of ideology that they use in the department store or the lady that's at the mall holding out the sesame chicken with a toothpick who wants you to taste it and say, damn, that's good. And go right over there and start buying some of the food. How do we apply that here? Well, we apply that very simply by when we're taking them through the qualifying process. This is really where the rubber meets the road. What is it that separates you? I give a damn. I give a damn. And realize this. I hear sales reps say, yeah, I want to hurry up because I know they want to get out of here. Wrong mentality. You want to know how you can tell if they're ready to go? They get up and they leave. So if they're still sitting there with you, guess what? That's a choice. And we have to make the most of it. So let's go through it. Initially, when we sit down with customers, I see a lot of sales reps that want to jump on that computer and start keying everything into the CRM. I get it. You need to put that information in the CRM, number one, so the information can be printed out later. Number two, so you can have it in there and people know that that's somebody you're speaking with. But here's number three, okay? Most salespeople are horrible typers. They're finger peckers. And so you take this person who already has apprehension about dealing with you. They don't trust you. They expect you're going to try to screw them. You get them in or you meet them on the showroom and you sit them down. And you immediately have them looking at the back of a computer screen. Now they're wondering what you're typing. And if they have to choose, guess what they're going to think? Oh, what's he doing? What's she doing? Filling out a credit app? Bad move. Another mistake I hear even prior to getting them in, I hear sales reps say, yeah, man, you know, why would I get them inside? I don't even have them on a car yet. That is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. When you greet a guest, they tell you what they're interested in, and you immediately walk them over to the vehicle before even bringing them inside. Let me tell you why that's stupid. Number one, let's just say they love it and they want to see it, but you don't have any keys. So guess what you have to do? You have to leave. Go back into the building, check out some keys while your customer is standing outside in the heat or in the cold. Now you got the keys to come out. But guess what? You don't even know if the lights were left on all night. So now you're about to try to show them a vehicle where the battery may be dead. Somebody might have showed it the day before. Somebody might have took it and went to McDonald's for lunch in it and left their McDonald's bag in it. You never got a chance to set the stage. The AC or the, heat, the climate control could be blowing out 90 degrees of heat. Or, uh, or or negative 20 degrees in cold weather. I mean, in, in cold air. So the customer gets in, it's either freezing or they're hot. Bottom line is you didn't set the stage. There is no good way to qualify a customer on that lot. The objective is to get them inside. It is meet and get them in the seat. Every tool you need is on the inside of your store. And the best thing, every brand, if you're doing Ford, Toyota, Nissan, please trust, there's another dealership in your city that has exactly the same new units you have outside. It may vary when it comes to the pre-owned part, but on the new car lot, you have exactly the same thing. So you're not about to go show this person something that's just gonna wow them. So when you bring them inside, it's your opportunity to establish a level of respect, a working relationship, so to speak. 
where you get their defensive wall down enough where you could peek over in their backyard and see what's going. The objective is to get them to open up enough where we can know what their objectives are, what got them out of the house, coming into the dealership, looking to do business, okay? So all of that, greeting them and asking them about credit on the lot, trying to show them a vehicle on the lot, this is what makes you a car salesman. And there's a difference between a car salesman, negative stigma, and an automotive sales professional, an automotive sales consultant, a product specialist. A specialist does the little things in a big way. So you wanna get them in and sit these folks down. Now, if I was to type you up a letter on Microsoft Word and send it to you, or if I hand wrote you a letter, which one has more impact on you? And if you said the handwritten one, you're right. It took more time, it's more intimate. Now imagine, instead of, instead of sitting your guests down, having them look at the back of a computer screen and wonder if you're doing a credit application, Imagine if you sat them down and you said, hey, folks, listen, you guys mind if I take some notes? I want to make sure I get everything you share with me accurate. It's extremely important. You're setting the stage that what they have to say is important. You're setting the stage that you're going to pay close attention. You're setting the stage that is so important to you, you're going to take notes. Now, of course, we're going to get it in the CRM. We get it in there before we even go get with the manager. But at this moment in time, when we're first sitting down, my objective is to show them I'm different because I care. People don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. And you want to ask them, hey, you guys mind if I get take some notes? You know why? Because if they don't know what you're doing, they're going to be looking over that desk, looking at that paper while you're writing upside down, wondering what it is you're putting down. And if they have to choose between what you're doing is to help them or hurt them, they're going to feel like you're hurting them. So be transparent. Now, when you start your questioning off, you want to learn how to mix in personal questions with vehicle related questions and really personal questions can take you into vehicle related story. The one thing that I train people to start off with is if the customer has identified is that, hey, listen, are you guys looking for something new or pre-owned? Uh, we're looking for something new. Awesome. Now, let me ask you, is this going to be your, uh, is this for business or personal use? Uh, it's for personal use. Awesome. So it's going to be your daily driver? Yeah. To and from your place of business? Yeah. That's awesome. What type of work do you do? Now, if you see, I was able to take new or used. They told me, looking for business or personal? Personal. Awesome. So your daily driver? Yeah. To and from your place of business? Awesome. What type of work you do? So as you see, those questions are what you call layered questions. They're layered to where when they respond, it allows me to go into another question. Okay? And at the, name, at the end of the day, he or she that's asking questions is in complete control. And so your questions, and when they tell you what they do for a living, don't just say, okay, great. Get them to elaborate. Really? How long you been doing that? Man, now what made you get into that field? Now, you may think it's just bullshit conversation. It's not. I get a chance to find out how long they've been on their job and what made them get into it. And people love to talk about themselves. And so allow this person to tell you they're proud of what they do. And then you take them through. At the end of the day, if you don't have questions like set up layered questions in your mind that you're prepared to ask with every person, it shouldn't matter if they're 17 or 70. It is the same when people say, well, I switch it up. That's why they're struggling. The only thing that should change is what I call the triple P's. And that is the person, the product, and the price. The person's name, because you're dealing with different people. The product they're interested in, because people have different interests. And then the price, because different products cost different things. But everything else from the greeting to when they leave is the same. So when you're going through your qualifying process, remember, Vehicle-related information is important, but personal information is even more important. 